The GTX 660 was released in 2012 and now can be bought for around 10 or maybe 20 dollars. Its predecessors from the 5 and 400 series are no longer supported by Nvidia, but the 660 is still receiving driver updates. In this video I want to see whether modern upscaling algorithms can save this graphics card and make it possible to play new games on it. Let's start with CS2. In the menu we are greeted with a not so optimistic 25 to 30 frames per second, despite using the lowest settings at full HD resolution. However, in the actual gameplay it's from 80 to 90 frames per second, and I saw the counter going up to 112. Even smoke and fire don't cause a significant FPS drop. Let's take a look at what upscaling gives us. By default the game offered the balanced mode. With it it's visually noticeable that the image is built from a lower pixel count, and you can see that distinctive shimmering. But there was no increase in frame rate. Maybe a few more frames in the smoke, but the average and maximum values remained the same. Even in performance mode, where upscaling is done from a 540p base, the counter showed the same results. I don't think we are hitting a CPU bottleneck, but just in case, I tried lowering the native resolution to 1280 by 720 and with it the frame rate ranged from 130 to 170 frames per second. Then I wanted to test Apex Legends. Theoretically it could run fairly well on this card, especially considering that it somehow exists on the first Switch. But since the March of 2025 the game requires full DirectX 12 support. And here where's the main weakness of the GTX 660 comes up. It doesn't support DirectX 12, only 11. I somehow missed it because technically the support was stated, but turns out it's very rudimentary. This card can run DirectX 12 games only if they don't use any actual DirectX 12 functionality, so DX11 in DX12 trench code, which isn't very useful as you can see. So we also wouldn't be able to see how well upscaling and temporal anti-aliasing works in enhanced GTA 5 for the same reason. But at least we can check the legacy version of this game. Here we encounter the second weakness of the GTX 660. It only has 2 gigs of memory. So if we want something other than the Blu-ray textures, we will have to drop all the settings to low. But I started with everything at low anyway, except population density, just to test the waters. And with that there is 100 to 120 frames on the meter. Yes, visually the game looks like it is on PlayStation 3 right now, but it's very playable. Let's try to up the settings a bit to get at least somewhat of a PlayStation 4 look. It is tricky with limited VRAM, but possible. Now we have much crispier textures and a little bit better overall feel with very respectable frame rate above 70 hitting 90 sometimes. In Cyberpunk the first thing I did was lowering all the settings manually below what the low preset suggests. And even with that in Full HD we are getting just about 15 frames per second, sometimes even around 10 or 12. It's the perfect case where FSR could help immensely. So if we choose performance mode in FSR 2.1 we will see the uplift to about 20 to 25 frames per second. But that's the only thing that would be visible, everything else turns black and that happens regardless of the mode. And if you try to go with FSR 3, the game will crash. But don't worry, we also have an Intel's upscaler, let's try that. With XESS in performance we are getting 1, just 1 frame per second. With image being noticeably less sharp than in native resolution, so it's really trying to do something. Well, when all modern methods fail, let's try old and reliable downscaling. Dropping the resolution to 720p gives us around 20 frames per second, which is good if you missed Cyberpunk launch on PlayStation and want to relieve those moments, but in general, yeah, that's too far from comfortable. Doom The Dark Ages recently got the update with path tracing, and that's amazing, but we will take a look at the original from 2016 for obvious reasons. OpenGL 1080p with low settings with reflections turned off will give us from 30 to 50 frames per second. It would be great to bump it up a bit with FSR, but it's not supported, so the conclusion is that the games where upscaling could actually help either don't launch on this card at all or show no performance gains. And the ones it can run were made long before FSR came around, so it simply isn't an option there. Of course you still can find a use for a card like this if needed, but overall this is clearly one of those cases where it's definitely time for an upgrade. It was a good run, but 600 series is simply getting too old and incompatible despite not being officially discontinued yet. And it's something that's not easy for me to say because back in the day that was my dream card, and somehow already 13 years passed since its release. Time flies with incredible speed. But anyway, that's all for today, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!